to uh, Westminster. Joanna Lumley speaking about that decision on the Gherkin. This is the legal team beside me. They've given five bullet points which virtually cannot be met by the ordinary Gurkha soldier. The first is that you've spent three years continuous lawful residence in the United Kingdom during or after service. Most Gurkhas are only allowed to stay in the United Kingdom for two years. So that's the first bullet point, which means nothing. The second is that you have close families settled in the UK with whom you enjoy family life within the meaning of Article 8 of the European Convention on Human Rights. Most Gurkhas have not been allowed to settle in the UK, so that bullet point is meaningless. Number three, you received a level one to three award for gallantry. Those are medals. That is the Victoria Cross, the DSO, the DCM, and Bar, or the Military Cross. Now, this is a discrimination against the ordinary soldier who has not been uh, awarded for gallantry. This sends out not only to the Gurkha soldiers, but to our own men fighting in Afghanistan and Iraq, the most appalling message that unless you have been awarded a medal for gallantry, you're not a real soldier. So for most of the Gurkha riflemen, this bullet point does not apply. You've completed 20 or more years service in the brigade. Now only the officer class are allowed to serve 20 or more years. The ordinary rifleman may only serve 15 years. So this bullet point does not apply. The last one is that you have a chronic or long-term <coughs> medical condition which is attributable to or was aggravated by service in the brigade. Well, how on earth are men who are injured in the 40s, 50s, 60s going to be able to prove that their long-term chronic illness is attributable to injuries received during their service. This one page of criteria has taken the government four months to come up with. It has made me ashamed of our administration. Thank you. As far as, far as the legal term team is concerned, this is nothing less than an act of treachery and betrayal. It has scant regard to the High Court judgment of last September. It has scant regard to the wishes of the people up and down the length and breadth of this country. False ceilings have been set that will not be met. We have a so-called Labour government that's prepared to give 200 billion to bankers, but not a penny to the Gurkhas. That's prepared to keep the ordinary rank and file soldier who has served so gallantly and has served this country for 15 years as keeping them out yet is allowing or trying to allow a small handful of officer class men into the country. It is nothing short of scandalous. It's, all this does is insult the integrity of the men of the brigade. And this is a matter that will be going back to the courts again because it's only been the courts that have supported our Gurkhas alongside the people of the country. We are disgusted with what we've seen today. And if I can add to that, Martin. This government, Mr. Willis, should hang their head in shame so low that their forehead should touch their boots. This is a disgrace and a betrayal of our armed forces and our veterans. The government say that 10,000 Gurkhas will benefit from this. I tell you that there are less than 100 Gurkhas who could ever possibly manage to set, satisfy the criteria that have been set out. This is a welcome home to the officer class and an utter, utter betrayal to the working man, to the ordinary man that Labour is supposed to champion. As Martin has said, 200 million for the bankers, not a tuppence halfpenny for the Gurkhas. This government is utterly out of step with the people of Great Britain, who have spoken in their hundreds of thousands. Last November, in just four weeks, over 250,000 British people signed a petition calling on this government to grant our soldiers settlement here in the country. 
The fact is that a foreign and Commonwealth soldier from any other country needs serve a mere four years to be granted settlement in this country. A Gurkha soldier, for some unknown reason, must serve five times that number. Phil Willis, Gordon Brown, Jackie Smith, hang your heads in shame! My name is David Enright and I have the honour to represent the Gurkha veterans and I will coin, take the words of a famous colleague of mine, a countryman of mine, and I say the Gurkhas have stood by us for 200 years and will we give up on them now? Never! 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 Never. Mr Peter Carroll from the Gurkha Justice Campaign. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope everybody that is listening or watching to this reaction today will understand that the one group of people that has never let this country down has been let down today in a manner which is truly appalling. But as the Gurkhas have never given up on us, we will not give up on them. With the fantastic help of Joanna, the brilliant legal advice and team that works tirelessly on this issue, and the hundreds of thousands of people that have signed petition after petition, this campaign now enters a new and even more vigorous stage. I urge everybody that cares passionately about the Gurkhas to log on to the gurkhajustice.org.uk website. We asked you before to log on to that to show your support. This time we're asking you to log on to it and contact us so that you can help us fight. Because from now on, we will focus ruthlessly on the politicians in this building behind us who have committed this act of absolute treachery. Today, I am ashamed. Where is the minister? Where is the prime minister? To deliver such a damning, hateful document on the internet shows that they are indeed political cowards, whereas the Gurkhas are true heroes. Thank you. Well, a very passionate uh, press conference as we've heard there for campaigners for the Gurkhas. Uh, that last speaker asking where the minister was, where was the prime minister. We can actually speak now to the immigration minister, Phil Woolis, who joins us uh, from Older. Mr Willis, you should be hanging your head in shame so low that it touches your boots. Well, I think the reaction is based on a misunderstanding.